we are not conventional in this exercise. We're on the fringes. We're in the grey space. We're acting as commando forces. So 40 Commando Battle Group, we're here out in the Mojave Desert in California. We have got two fighting companies, we've got eight battery from 2-9 Commando, we've got a large section of engineers from 5-9 Squadron and of course we bring our own mortars and recce call sites. Armoured Support Group for Royal Marines are three commander brigades protecting mobility specialists using the Viking platform. So ASG at the moment is operating in 29 Palms out of Camp Wilson and we're in the mock-up village. So the Viking can be used as a form of protective mobility taking troops in and out of hot areas so we can take it all the way to the front. We can be used as a mounted fire support position. We can be used as a um, Kazovac capability, uh, not only the ambulance but also the troop carrying variants. A troop in armour support group is just expected to operate exact same as a, uh, a troop within a fighting company. We've got the same skill sets, the lads have been to the fighting companies, uh, so they, they're all over there, dismounted role. For the um, modern commando, we know that they um, can pick up technology very quickly, so we can rely on that hardened person to be able to work further behind enemy lines than we have done for some time. And then also having the intelligence to make some sensible risk deductions on how much they can get away with. Because ultimately it's going to boil down to the balance between survivability and lethality. So we were operating as the enemy forces in a peer-on-peer -peer exercise. We were just told to be a sort of a devious enemy, really. That gave us a chance to really delve into the sort of commando values and ethos and sort of looking back to our forebearers. And he wanted us deep behind enemy lines, disrupting them, and causing a lot of uh, disturbance for them, so that they they were constantly thinking about what was happening behind them rather than focusing on the main fight. And that was pretty much the role of the commandos in World War II. We were right down to the southwest, working in really small, disaggregated teams. So we had a, an OP screen out, um, but we just stayed in those OPs for three days. Um, anything up to sort of seven to nine k away from the enemy. So we were constantly getting eyes on, monitoring what they were doing, and um, they had absolutely no idea we were there. It's more, moving more into a sort of special reconnaissance rather than just the sort of normal stuff that we do. So being at reach, away from your resupply, away from your sort of chain of command, puts a lot of focus on the the younger lads kind of step up. We need the right balance of skilled commandos to operate all of the different things that you see in modern warfare, be it controlling jets, controlling artillery, listening to electronic warfare collection or interpreting the battle space in front of them, and then down also to closing and killing the enemy. 2-9 is commando artillery unit which provides offensive support to 3 commando brigade and within 2-9 we have FSTs, so fire support teams and we have JTACs, and that's a combination of army commandos and war marine commandos and we have the gun line, we provide the actual, the actual fire support with 105 light guns. Today we've been conducting a direct fire serial uh, that involves two nines um, gun group and they've been testing their ability to engage enemy targets at close range. Direct fire is a really, really good training serial for the gun group, especially for young gunners who haven't done it before. Um, pretty exhilarating, seeing the target you're engaging, which is pretty unusual for them. So they're on a, a gun position as normal and then they've basically had a contact rear. Um, they've then had to take the guns out of position, move them to another platform and start engaging targets a kilometre away. So everyone at 2-9 
is commando trained. They've been through the All Arms Commando course and that qualifies them to work as part of 3 Commando Brigade. Everyone's got their own SQ. First and foremost, everyone is a commando trained soldier. JTACIN is coordinating safe fires on the ground with the ground commander's intent. So we get a lot of training with the USMC, most of it being um, CAS, live firing and TTPs. With the aircraft that we've got so far, so it's normally AV-8Bs, Heweys, Cobras and they'll come in with rockets and guns, which is quite good for armoured vehicles uh, or troops in open, so it's quite good to mop up uh, stuff that you haven't done with your CAS asset. I've also had support from the Canadians, the Griffins, firing 50 cal and uh, 762 from the door gunnery side of life. Uh, we've also had A10s and F35 Alphas um, on this exercise. So 24 Commando provide engineering support to Free Commando Brigade. We do a lot of manual method of entry, explosive method of entry, to allow the Marines access into buildings. 2-4 Commando have been training with the USMC here in 29 Palms, sharing our knowledge and integrating forces. The main exercise will see us enabling access to denied areas, utilising our mine and obstacle clearance skills, whilst also denying enemy the access through demolitions, traps and obstacle construction. Uh, we're conducting a mortar live firing a concentration. So we're doing uh, three day serials and two night serials. But as the week goes on, it'll get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more challenging. And then after this uh, live firing concentration that we do on our own here, we're then going to come together with, with the rest of the unit uh, for part of the LFTT. Uh, during the MWX, we were sort of assaulting uh, onto uh, Hidalgo and we were being used in a in a traditional or more conventional role at the beginning, we went through a bit of a fire plan uh, as they were assaulting onto positions and then into the second phase we were acting almost as like an irregular force, we're still uh, calling in fire missions and it's working quite well um, with four and uh, five troops from Bravo Company. Uh, they were fighting hard with the enemy and then falling back and then when the enemy came into that area we were able to call fire missions onto it and uh, I think it was having quite a good effect. So we've um, been using remotely piloted aerial systems so that we can throw a camera up at night and we can then assess where the enemy is and then understand how much risk we can take to get close to him. What's different with the Ghost is that you know it comes with that kind of tactical edge to it. It's built for soldiering purposes, it's built for finding people. It's always searching, it's constantly looking. This isn't just a drone with a camera, it's, it's AI at the end of the day. We're going to see how it fits into our orbit. We're going to see how it helps the guys out on the ground. And we've noticed already it's proven to be a really good asset. You need to be quite innovative um, and willing to kind of push forward. We're testing the water with everything we're doing, then bridge the gap in between analog soldiering and digital soldiering.